Hi guys, in this video we are going to discuss the problem C from education round 141 that was rated for div 2. So the problem's name is yet another tournament. The problem states that you are participating in yet another tournament. There are n, one, n plus 1 participants, you and uh, n other op opponents numbered from 1 to n. Each two op participants will play each, uh, against each other. If the opponent i plays against the opponent j, he wins if and only if i is greater than j. When the opponent i plays against you, everything becomes a little bit complicated. In order to get a win against opponent i, you need to prepare for the match for at least ai minutes. Otherwise, you will lose that match. You have n, uh, m minutes in total to pre prepare for the matches, but you can prepare only one match at a, at a moment. In other words, if you want to win against opponent p1, p2 and so on to pk, you need to, to spend a total amount of ap1, ap2 up to uh, up so up to so until apk if you don't understand it right now don't worry I'll, i'm gonna explain this i'm also gonna uh, gonna explain like why i was getting wrong test cases and what's the tip over, tip over here like what you can follow follow so that this doesn't happens to you then they're saying that if this number is greater than m you cannot achieve it because if you'd want to prepare for a uh, like let's say x amount of time and if the time you are having is m and m is less than is x then definitely you can't prepare for it so I'll just uh, like leave the rest for you to read but in uh, like we have to return what's the rank that the person can have so the rank is determined by the number of matches a person is gonna win so let's say if I'm uh, I'm winning fifth uh, I'm winning five contests and the other person is winning four con contests then I'll be having a better rank than him right and people who are having uh, like si uh, similar wins so two people who have exactly same wins are ranked similarly so let's try to understand it first. So what they are saying is that, let's say there are several opponents with values AIs. So over here, for example, they have mentioned that the AI value is uh, 100, 100, 200, and 1. Also, they have mentioned that the number of, uh, like the amount of time we have to prepare is 101. So this is the amount of time in total we have in which we can prepare. One, 401, not 101, sorry. Okay, so what we can do? So we can say that I can prepare for the, uh, against this uh, this uh, this particular person. Yes, I can do that. Can I prepare against this? Yes, against this. Yes, against this. Yes. So I can prepare against all of them because all of them combined require a four zero one preparation time. Hundred plus hundred is two hundred. Two hundred plus two hundred is four hundred. Plus one is four hundred in total. Yeah. So I have I have the required time to pre prepare against all of these people. So I can beat all of them. Now there would be scenarios where you are not able to beat all of them, you might be able to be beat none of them or may, might be able to beat some of them. So what would be the optimal approach over here? So what we can say is, since we know that if i is greater than j, then i always wins, always wins. With that in mind, what we can say is that a person who, like opponent who is represented to the right would always win against all the left opponents. So Technically, let's not consider ourselves right now, or let's just consider that we are always going to lose. We can consider any of any of these two scenarios. So we can say that we are always going to lose. So the zeroth player just wins against us. Let me change the font of this pencil. It's way too big, I guess. Yeah. So the zeroth player wins against us. The first player over here, he'll win against zero as well as against us. So he'll have two wins in total. So this has one wins. This has two. This would have three wins. This would have four. Up to so on. And at the end, the element would have n wins, right? Now, what can I do? What I can I do? What I can do is that I can say, let's store these values into another array, right? So let's say this is a, C, a copied array, or let's just call it CP. So over here, I'll just copy the values. That is the AI, like all the times, uh, the times required to win against opponent. So that the time is represented in this array. I'll copy all of these values down. And after that, I, I'll sort it. So the benefiting of sorted, sorting it is that since I want to win as, as many matches as possible, so if I sort, sort this out, then I'll be able to uh, like get that number. So when I sort it, so the values would somewhat become like this, like one, two, four, six, eight, something like this. If I have M is equal to, let's say uh, seven, or 8, what would happen in that case? I'll start from here. So I'll say, okay, I'll, I can reach, uh, win this, this match. If I win this uh, against this person, I'll be left with the m equal to 7. 
Now I can also win against this. I will be left with m equal to 5. I can al also win against. I will be left with m equal to 1. But I can't win against this one now because it requires a time of 6. I only have a time of 1 left. So I'll just return that I can win against 3 people at max. I think that is super easy to understand. So over here, I'll just return that I can win against three people. Oh, this is one edge case that we need to see over here. The edge case is that let's say this is the array, and now this is uh, this is winning against one person. This is winning against two. This is three. This is four. This is five. As we discussed earlier. So what could happen is let's uh, that we can say that okay, I'm going to win against three people in total. So I would be placed somewhat over here, right? Right now, I'm assuming that every person is beating me. I know that assumption is incorrect because I'm already having three. But since that doesn't make any difference over here at least, so I'm making the assumption. So every person is winning against me. Now, what if, although there would be three people in this uh, like in this array who would be losing from me, that's why I have a score three. So there could be any people. They could be like, let's say they are the th first three people who are losing against me. I'm just assuming that right now, that assumption doesn't change this fact. But now what I can say is that if I, if I myself make this person lose, the person at four, right? If I make this person lose, so what would happen is that his ranking was all, would also go down to three, right? As his uh, ranking would go down to three, he would be at the same level as my, right? Initially, I was having a ranking of uh, like this was, he was the first ranked, this was the second ranked, and I was the third ranked. But if I beat him, so me and him would both be at the similar level so we would be uh, would both be at the second level and i can improve my ranking this is the only edge case in this question so what we need to do is that once we have calculated the uh, calculated the number of wins we can have what we need to check is that if it's possible uh, so it could have it could have been the case that uh, okay let, let's just try to understand it by a simple example like uh, we discussed uh, above so this was the area we were having and I said that the M you are having is 8. So what you did is that you said, okay, what I'll do is that I can win against him. I can have a M equal to 7, then M equal to 6, then M equal to uh, 2 over here. Like you win against this. This is what you are left with. You win against this. This is what you left with. You win against this. This is what you are left with, right? So you would be somewhere standing over here. You would be having a rank 2. So that's completely fine. But now what I'm saying is, what if you can make this person lose. So if you make this person lose right now, in totality, he's winning against all of these three people and against you as well. So in totality, he's having four wins. You are having three wins. Your rank is one, uh, your rank is two. Now, if you make this person lose, and let's say you lose by this person, right? So this is the person you lost to. And this is the person you won against. Then what would happen is his, okay, so his rank would fall by one. So or his score that is the number of person he beats would fall by, fall by one so the number of person he will beat with with three now you also are having the score three all right now this person would increase his score by one but his score would then become uh two plus one so that would be three so that doesn't matter because uh, if you are having three threes or if you are having any number of similar scores then all of you would be ranked similar so that won't uh, change the fact that you are at the same level. So now what would happen is that your rank would become one, right? Now, is it possible to beat him? So what I can say is that if I had not beaten any person, I, uh, any person, one of the persons in the previous iteration, so over here, let's say I, if I had not beaten him, so I would still be having a value of m equal to six, right? So I can utilize the m equal to six to beat him. And then I can say that I'm rank number one. I hope that made sense. This was the only edge case we had to uh, see. So let's get to the code. Now the code I'm showing here is the exact same code I submitted. So this might not be that easy to understand, but I'll try my level best. So what I'm doing is that in initially I'm storing the values in a pair. The only reason I'm storing it in a pair is that I want to know the values itself and the indices because as soon as I sort it, the indices would get shuffled. So I also want to know the indices. So that's why I've stored it in a key value pair. After that, I sorted, like I said, then I use a function called maxwins. So what maxwins gives give me is that it, it firstly gives me a vector of int. So vector of int 
uh, actually represents the people I am winning against. So initially I am winning against no one, right? But as soon as I'll say that I okay I win against this person, I'm just marking it by one. So this is required because uh, because okay. So as I said that you'll have to choose a person with whom against you. If if you lose, then you can uh, win against the particular person who's just to to your right. So this is required for that process. The, yeah, that's what I'm sending. So I'm sending that, uh, this particular vector. Along with that, I'm sending the number of wins I can have, and the uh, the value I spend in winning, winning it. Because uh, it could happen that for winning against x people, you required let's say um, y power. So you you are still left with you are. Still left with, let's say m minus y power, right? Because m was the initial power you had, or the initial time you had. I'm using power and time interchangeably. Apologies for that. So if you have m minus y power left, this might be crucial because when you are trying, when you are gonna try to beat someone to your right, this would add up to it, right? So this is also crucial. So I'm also sending this for max wins. So then I'm getting the value over here. I'm storing it appropriately. After that, what I'm doing is that I'm calculating the rank. So right now, my rank would be the number of people that are to my right. I'll initially assume that all of them are winning, uh, like all of them are ahead of me. So my rank would be n minus that the number of uh, direct wins I'm getting, plus one. Now I'm testing for some edge cases. So let's say if I win against everyone, I'll be rank one. If I win against no one, I'll be rank n plus one. But I think even if you remove this, the code should still be valid. Cool. After that, what I'm saying is that I want to calculate the person from which I want to lose. Uh, so by that, what I mean is that initially I'm winning against a set of people. As I said, that I want to lose from one person in that group, so that I'm able to attain, uh, like, gain some gain some time, and I'm able to uh, beat the person who's just to my right. So that's what I'm doing over here. I'm just checking that if a if I if I was uh, like winning against a person. Then I'm trying to store the maximum value, right? So let's say I'm, I was winning against the person who was uh, taking a time of, like, uh, let's say four to prepare. Now what I want to do is that instead of wasting four time, uh, like four units of time, in order to beat him, I want to utilize this time to beat the person who's just tried to me. So I want to store the maximum value. I'm doing that over here. Then I'm checking if my SI second. So this basically means in the sorted array. If the second uh, in, uh, second index that is the original index, right? So that is what I I'll be using in order to calculate who's exactly to the right of me. I hope that makes sense. That's a very basic thing. So if that happens, then I want to check that can I beat him? So I can only beat him if this max. So this is the max that I uh, like calculated over here. So this is the power that I can uh, uh, the power that or the time that I can spare if I don't. Like prepare to beat against this particular person, if that power plus the remaining power I already had, so there was some remaining power over here. If you remember, if that is greater than the uh, than the ta time required to beat this particular guy, then I'll decrease uh, decrease my rank by one because I can if I, if I'm able to beat him, then I'll have to decrease my rank by one. And then at the end, I'm doing this, so this is not required. Actually, it was giving W earlier, so I was doing some testing, so I can simply predict uh, like return my rank. So yeah, this is the code. I hope you understood the explanation. Uh, the code was somewhat easy. The only reason I was getting a TLA is that uh, okay, it ended. Let me check the code. Okay, so what I was doing is that this is just a silly mistake, so maybe you should avoid it. Um, was doing it somewhere over here itself. Yeah, the integer I was uh, the index I was selecting was different, so I uh, I like kind of forgot that uh, the indexes have been swapped, right? Because of sort sorting, so I was doing this silly mistake. Although I've, I had initially taken the right uh, data structure that was a pair of intent because I knew that it uh, they would uh, get jumbled up, but I was still uh, committing the same mistake. So that's why I got three uh, WAs. Anyway, so let's yeah that that's it for the video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. 
Thanks a lot, guys.